today we're taking on Brick Rigs Drill 5, and um, they have a pretty typical team nowadays. You, you see this type of setup a lot in Pokemon Brick Bronze. You got the Charizard that you get from a code, the uh, Garchomp you get from a code, a Groudon, pretty typical these days. Then, you know, this Ash Greninja, Zara Aura, Gengar. Like, see, these Pokemon are all just so, so common at this point. I just, I look forward to the day where we start getting some more diversity in the PvP scene. But anyways, um, I do want to shout him out for battling though. He initially didn't want to, but he still decided to step up and was pretty brave on behalf of that. So anyways, he leads with Gengar and I lead with Pidgeot. So normally I like to lead with Venomoth, although I really figured that at this point it's, it's not worth the effort because Venomoth, at least my one, doesn't have a good move pool. I probably gotta change it up later on. Maybe I'll sacrifice um, having Roost or um, having Sludge Rave and I could probably put an item on there that would benefit its attack because really it isn't really that good in terms of longevity. So, you know, that's that. So, anyways, I go for the Hurricane on the Gengar. It does crazy good damage and then he goes for the Shadow Ball. I guess he didn't know what type this Pidgeot was. But, um, anyways, I was gonna say having Pidgeot as a lead is actually pretty good because this game runs on a Gen 6 mechanic where um, you use your pre-mega pre evolution speed on the first turn and you only get your mega evolution speed on the turns after that so Pidgeot in a sense really really suffers from that mechanic because um, it needs its speed and it doesn't have any defense so um, you know it doesn't want to ever have to take hits so getting it into mega form is pretty useful and then you always have U-turn so you can pivot out into something else depending on the matchup and you, see, you know in most cases you would hope that you can outspeed whatever is sent out and even then you know if you switch into a, a wrong Pokemon you can only switch out and hopefully you'd have good teammates that would benefit you know with that type of you know way of playing so anyways I go for a heat wave here and this was actually probably not a good move I was trying to mix up a bit but I probably couldn't just gone for a hurricane and still have been fine because like I looked at his team and he didn't really have any Pokemon that would really, you know, take Hurricane too well. So he goes into Greninja, and I kind of suffered there because Hurricane would have done more damage. Anyways, I take the risk of him not having any speed investment, and it does pay off because we were able to outspeed and knock out the Ash Greninja, which is a W. Now, um, a lot of questions may arise on behalf of why that Greninja is in Ash Greninja form um, on the first turn. And to really answer that question, a lot of people have spawned in Ash Greninjas. And um, when you have those type of Pokemon, sometimes they get glitched where, it, you know, like with different form changes, it's like, you know, Ash Greninja starts off in Ash Greninja form rather than regular form, where normally you have to knock out a Pokemon before it becomes Ash Greninja. So, you know, that's, that's kind of the explanation. So anyways, um, I decided to switch out here because there's no way we will outspeed, or we, we will probably outspeed if he doesn't have any speed investment, but there's no way we will be able to knock this out and he will probably one shot us back with his electric type move. So I go into Weezing, my physical tank, and I decide to set up a layer of toxic spikes in case he switched out into the Groudon, which would, you know, be able to, in some cases, not be affected if it's, you know, Primal Groudon. So anyways, we get the toxic spikes up, and he goes into Garchomp, which is actually really nice for us because this this exact Pokemon gets completely shut down by Weezing. So I go for the Will Wisp, and then he reveals that he's using Dig rather than Earthquake, and you never want to do that when you have a Pokemon like Garchomp, because Dig is one of the most abusable moves in the game. So I could just switch out right here into Pidgeot if I wanted to, but um, anyways, I go for the Will Wisp again, because you know, I figured it would be pretty nice, since um, I could get Lapras in um, if I have this a lot more weaker, and um, before that though, I wanted to set up another layer of Toxic Spikes, so that um, you get the full Bally poisoned effect on anything he switches into. So um, next turn he goes for an attack just to test the waters and see how much damage his stab Dragon Claw does. And to my surprise, it does basically nothing to Weezing, and I'm able to get off my Toxic Spikes once again. So here I decide to switch out into Lapras because you know I figured we may as well actually get Lapras in the game because once Lapras is in there's not too many Pokemon that can easily switch into its stab combinations of freeze dry and hydro pump so he goes for the crunch which does no damage so anyways uh, this prompts me to go for the uh, freeze dry because in case he goes into Groudon you know we should be fine and Zeraora is still probably not gonna take the freeze dry too well 
So, you know, I figured, you know, that would be a good move. So he goes into Zara Aura, gets poisoned, and he lands a freeze dry. So, um, the next thing though, he reveals that he actually has Wall Switch on this Zara Aura. But I go into Weezing predicting his, um, his T Punch because that's what he launched earlier. And, you know, typical, he goes for another T Punch. Although, if he really just went for Wall Switch there, he could have done massive damage. He could have got a lot of momentum too. But, you know, he didn't do that. So, anyways. Um, I decided to launch a sludge bomb because um, I figured it would do pretty good damage to the Zerora if he stayed in it. Probably would be enough to knock it out along with the side effects of the poison. But he goes for wall switch then which does pretty good damage if I do say so myself. I land my sludge bomb although it really doesn't do too much to the Charizard. But anyways I decided to stay in here because um, this is most likely going to be his mega Pokemon. Most people that have the shiny Charizard are running it as their Mega as well. So, um, the Mega Charizard, why? Not too many of my Pokemon can actually really handle it too well. So I figured that, you know, I may as well stay in, even at the expense of losing my Weezing, because it's already done its job. It's basically shut down. It's basically shut down Garchomp. The Zero Aura is now in the range of being knocked out by Pidgeot, so you know, really, there's not too much of a need for it anymore. So, he goes for Solar Beam, I guess this was his mix-up. Maybe he was expecting me to switch out into Starmie, and you know, that did not work for him, unfortunately. And now, I know for sure, you know, I already know this guy, he's not gonna go for Solar Beam twice. Like, I, like he, you know, with his Garchomp, he went for Dragon Dance, he was his, I mean, not Dragon Dance, Dragon Claw, then he went for Crunch. So, you know, if he's gonna do that type of, you know, behavior, of course, he's probably going to try a different move this time to see how much damage it would do. So this prompted me to go into uh, Starmie. Also because I didn't want to lose my Weezing if I could avoid not losing it. So, you know, I figured this would be a pretty free switch. Although I just wanted to see what he would actually go for um, as his alternative to Solar Beam. And he goes for Flame Charge. And now, um, I know this guy. I, I literally learned him. I know how he's going to play. So, you know... Let me just comment down below, pause the video and comment down below, what's he going to do when he sees a water type Pokemon? And uh, I react according to that, I don't even have to hesitate, I just do it because I already know exactly what this guy is going to go for. He goes for the Solar Beam, he takes the bait, and um, you know, of course, it still does a good chunk of damage to Rapid Dash because Rapid Dash is not at all bulky, but um, you know, we get another turn of poison off on him and you know now this is the last turn to really inflict damage which means that the Charizard is basically nullified so I'm tempted to go for the Flare Blitz but then I realize you know poison is going to take him out and he's going to outspeed us so I may as well go for the Morning Sun and he goes for Fly so you know this was definitely a W move right there because you know we get HP back and you know if we went for Flare Blitz it would be pointless so there goes Charizard so you know that's that so anyways his next move is to go into Garchomp and um I already know what this guy's running on Garchomp, he's running Dig, so, you know, I, in my opinion, there's no point really having to switch out. In most cases, we should outspeed, and because of um, the Sunlight, our Flare Blitz is going to do massive damage to him, and it does, in fact, do massive damage, and then he goes for his Dig, and, you know, once again, that move is a liability. If he had Earthquake, it probably would have done a lot more, you know, damage to Rapid Dash, but he didn't have that, and then he dies underneath the ground, which is a very unfortunate fate. For the Garchomp, so his uh, his next Pokemon to send in is his Groudon, but then unfortunately at this time he decides to leave the game because um, he remembered that this Pokemon is banned from the Colosseum. But you know me personally at this point I don't really care too much because I see Groudons and Kyogres all the time. But you know it is what it is. But that is GG.